Good morning home improvers. Uh, this is my video of replacing, oh there's a part I forgot. These are the tools you're going to need. G'day home improvers. Today I'm going to take apart this Kerker. It's called a Kerker because it's in German. See those two dots above the A? And a CH is just pronounced as kind of a H. So Kerker or Karcher as they say in the USA uh, is a pressure sprayer and as far as I know it's the only thing they do do very well is pressure sprayers and uh, so you, you plug in one end into the electrical outlet so it powers a pump and then you pump through this entrance this uh, I don't know what they're called spigot or whatever and um, you can connect that to the garden hose and it'll superpower your water so you can clean off any concrete or farm tools or mud or just about anything that you need to clean. Uh, it's a perfect tool for that kind of thing. But because I had problems with it, I cracked the top of the pump over the winter because there was water left in it and it got to minus 14 degrees Celsius in the garage. So it was very, very, very cold. Uh, the water that was left in it cracked the top of the pump and I'm going to have to replace that. I did replace it last week, but while I was replacing it, unfortunately, I broke this little rubber triangular, I would call it a ring, but it's a triangle. This thing costs like 14 euros to buy a new one, but without it, I don't have the opportunity to get full pressure from the machine. Uh, you can see it, it fits all of these different it's an original part and it's just a piece of rubber. Uh, I was a little disappointed how expensive a little piece of rubber could cost but without the rubber in there which I didn't have after I put the pump back together because I'd broken the rubber because it's very soft it's deceptively soft it looks like something very hard uh, you know like thick rubber band but it's not so much and when you squeeze the machine back together if you don't do it correctly you just cut this thing in half or cut a whole piece off like I did last week so I'm going to replace this today and to do it I'm going to need a, a drill with the biggest um, uh, hexagonal part on the tip on the end I'm going to have to use the biggest hexagon tip that comes with my drill set and I'm also going to need only for a minute I'm going to need this flathead screwdriver because the flathead screwdriver is just to take off the the wheels as you can see they just pop right off but you do need something to pop them off with I've got a Phillips head screwdriver and every single person in the world should own a Phillips head screwdriver uh, not just for projects like this, but for anything. Alright, that's going to come in handy for taking apart half of the pump. But the, the body, it, I need a 15 gauge, uh, I don't know what they're called, like star tip or star head. I don't know what they're called exactly. I don't even know if I can focus on this thing properly. But at any rate, <laughs> that sucks. I'm going to try to focus on it. Can I do it? Can it be done? No. Bugger. I'm trying to show you that the tip of this is a star. Does it make any sense? There, you can kind of see it. It's not a Phillips head. It's not a flathead screwdriver. Uh, it's got six points and it's a number 15. So it's not like your ordinary screwdriver. It's different. And this is the kind of screwdriver you must use to take apart the Kerka machines because they only have these star screwdrivers uh, for the body anyway. After you get the body off, it's a simple matter of uh, taking the pump apart and then putting it back together. This time I'm going to use some grease when I put in this um, ring or this gasket. That's the right word. It's a gasket. 
So when I put this gasket in, I'm going to put a uh, grease around it so it sits in the, the joint properly. And then when I push down with the top part of the pump, um, the grease will hold it in place and it won't shift or move as what did happen last weekend. All right, without further ado, I'm going to take this baby apart and you're going to see what the inside of the Kircha or the Karcher looks like. This machine cost us a, a few hundred bucks, I don't know, 250 or so. So it's worth keeping and it's worth repairing. Even if the gasket costs uh, 13 or 14 euros, it's worth fixing a machine like this. You don't want to dump good machinery just because it needs a replacement part. And nowadays you can order almost everything online. All of the screws for the Kerker are on the back. You can access everything from the back. So the front of the machine looks very simple. But still, um, take off this water plug because you won't be able to, yep, you won't be able to take off the cover if this plug stays on there. There's a little filter inside. You can check it if you want. Check that it's not uh, full of calcium or, or any kind of other nasty ingredients. I washed this out only a week ago and it probably takes months to get really full of calcium or anything like that. But you can check it pretty much whenever you want. Uh, it's not taking a machine apart, it's just taking this cover off. Uh, but anyway, I'll separate this so I don't lose it and I'll keep it with the, the plug so these two babies stay together. I'll put that off to the side so they don't get mixed up with anything. There are a lot of parts to this machine and you don't want to lose any of them. All right. There might be a little bit of water in it, you know, so that's why I am doing this in the bathroom. It's a bugger to take apart and book back together, but you can do it in a very short amount of time. You just need to, first of all, take off these silver screws that you can see on the, around the outside edge. These ones you need your star head screwdriver that is a 15 gauge. 15. This is for people in Europe. Maybe it's a different size or something in the USA. Keep your screws safe and off to one side for the whole operation. That's a bit better. Yep, looks like a bug fallen on its back. All right, so I'll leave a recording like that, I think. I don't think you miss out on too much. Should see everything going on. You will also need a bucket to hold the pump in because there's oil in that pump and if the oil spills out, it can be very expensive to replace. I prefer to do this by hand. It just feels like less can go wrong. All right, there's two more screws under these wheels. To get to those screws, I've got my flathead screwdriver. I pop out these plastic plugs. These just basically slide in and hold the wheels in place. Once you take the plug out, the 
the wheels pop right off. As you can see, it's just basically a lock system that holds the two things together. Once you take this plug off, the wheels pop straight off. Put them off to the side, and now you can actually see four. There's going to be four more screws. That's easy. Keep everything together that goes together, and hopefully you won't lose anything. Heaven forbid. If anyone knows the name of what a star screwdriver is, please leave a comment below. Because I just call them <laughs> star tip or star screwdriver. I don't know what the correct name for it is. Uh, no one ever told me either. We just went looking for it in the hardware store. And I've used these kinds of tips for lots of things. Uh, they actually are much more reliable because they stay centered, not like the normal uh, Phillips head, which can eventually get worn. Uh, if this gets worn, of course, you can't use it. But because I'm only using it as a screwdriver, there's no chance of a machine moving too fast and you know causing burrs to happen or rounding off of the edges. So I've got these two left. Yeah, without using a drill, I'm in more control. Oh, and these, these are actually screwing into plastic. So you've got to think there's only so many times that that tooth is going to hold. You know, that, if that thread goes in and out so often because you're repairing the machine a lot or something, or you're careless with a, a drill, then uh, it's going to thread and you're not going to be able to do much about that except maybe try to get bigger screws. Uh, I guess that's a, a solution. Hopefully by that point you're more careful with how you use your machine. Alright, there are two more screws in here. Uh, these two screws hold the head or where this roll is. And for that I just use a normal Phillips head. It's two screws only. I'm not taking apart the whole head, I'm just sliding it off. I don't need to get the whole machine separate. I only need the plastic off. Oh, here is a hose. I'll try to zoom in on that. Okay, here, there it is. There's the hose that joins the uh, high pressure water into this uh, spool and then it comes out of the gun and it's already high pressure by then. So everything here has to be super, super tight. Uh, in order to take this hose off, you pull out this long pin. Very easy, just so easy. You just pull out that pin, yeah, here it is. And remember, always keep everything in one place. And I'm putting the, this pin in that bucket that you saw me using earlier. The bucket comes in handy because nothing can roll out of a bucket. All right. That's it. I can pull, pull the hose out. Easy. Make sure that this little ring in here is intact. You want every single rubber part of this machine to be intact. You can actually buy a uh, pack of all of the rubber rings that the Kerka uses. We have bought one of them. I think there was about eight bucks. But I don't have to replace every rubber ring. When I next take this machine apart, like maybe in a year, or maybe in six months, I will replace every rubber ring on the machine. And I'll make another video because it's not really that technical. Uh, I think once you've taken it apart once, it's not that scary. It just takes a little bit of time. All right, so I've separated this hose, uh, and then this top part could come off. Let me double check that I've unscrewed it properly. Ah, I haven't unscrewed it. I'm not sure if normal people climb on the machine while they're taking it apart, but I just find it's more stable. 
It's also why I put styrofoam at the bottom so it doesn't roll around on the stone floor. Alright, you can hear it's loose. Double check and everything. Yeah, that's loose. Alright, I can take the whole cover off now, I think. Alright, so. Here's the, the yellow plastic and the black plastic where they join together. I pull them apart wherever I can, wherever I can. Yeah. And in here, uh, there's a couple of things that are interesting. Uh, first, unplug this hose that's joined to the pump. The other one just takes air. It doesn't really take air, it takes dishwashing liquid or, or detergent. Anyway, you'll notice. All right, first and foremost, the, this pump, the heaviest part of the pump is pointing up. So for me, intuitively, it's uh, upside down, but it probably makes a lot of sense because where the water moves, is in the lowest part of the machine. So I guess the water could easily be cleaned out and then you wouldn't have to leave the water in there over winter like I did. The part we need to replace is, well, we replaced this last week. We have to take this pump out of the machine, which is very easy to do now because once the cover is off, the pump can basically slide right out. There's not much holding the pump in the machine there's this little bit more substantial styrofoam uh, and as you can see that kind of just holds it in place. I broke the styrofoam. It doesn't really make a difference once you put it back together as long as everything's in the right place. It's okay. All right, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. But anyway, I took that piece of styrofoam, just put it off to the side. The cover here also has an electrical uh, connector that isn't really going through the box, it's slid into the side. So you can slide that out again, that easily. Just slide it in, slide it out. You'll have to remember that later, because at this little hook point, it's like a D shape, and that D shape fits the electrical cable perfectly. It's just a lovely design. Anyway. Uh, take the cover off. I don't need it at this point. I'll put it on the other side. Now this part is the important bit. Um, I need to take this motor out of the machine, but all I need to do is slide it. And if I just slide, well kind of slide it because the feet here are stuck into the machine. Um, they're stuck into there or slid into there. So I need to slide this up and it's extremely heavy. You will be surprised. I don't know how much it is. Maybe it's 10 kilos, but it's heavy. All right. See, just slid straight out. Didn't have to unplug anything, unscrew anything. I take the hose, so everything's separate. And now I don't even need the bottom. Okay, I guess there's still a little water in there, but that's to be expected, and that's why I do it in the bathroom. Alright, I'll take these screws, uh, these screwdrivers out of the bucket, and now I put the... <sighs> pull these screws off to the side as well. Clip. I use the bucket to hold the pump. The pump is extremely heavy, and if it gets out of control when you use the drill, uh, it could hurt you. So putting it in the bucket, at least for me, makes it more stable. While it's in the bucket, I could even throw in a rag so it sits more evenly.
That's it. All right, so I put in a towel and it just sits better in the bucket. This part, uh, this top portion is not really necessary to keep. I'll try to get a, a closer shot because things are kind of important. Right on. The cool thing about the pump, or the thing I like about the pump, is that um, this piece of plastic here, which where the water goes in, and this piece of plastic here, which is just the clip that holds the bottom of the pump, this is the bottom, uh, they're just held in with these clips. Very, very simple metal clips. All you need again is your flathead screwdriver. And if I can show you here, maybe it's been pushed down real hard and you need to pry up the corner of it. You notice when you start prying up the corner of it, it starts to move out and slide. Then once it's up high enough, you can put the screwdriver in the middle or at least to either side and keep working it. And mine are a little bit rusty. But I don't mind, it doesn't matter. I don't need them to be greased or anything. There we go. Uh, it did bend slightly. It's all right, I can fix that bend. Anyway, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. All right, this is the clip I'm talking about. There are two clips like this, uh, holding the plastic parts to the metal parts of this pump. All right, there's one clip here. Let's dig it into my styrofoam so it doesn't disappear. Um, and now this thing can just wiggle off. I know it's got a thread here, but you don't have to do anything. It just wiggles off. <laughs> All right, the last of the water can be seen in the bottom of the pump there. It's only a few drops. Uh, and there's no electrical, nothing is plugged in because that would just be silly. All right, so these four heavy duty uh, screws, I don't know if you'd call them Allen nuts or whatever, Allen bolts, but use an Allen key to take them off. To take this off, I needed an Allen key with... All right, I needed an... All right. <clears throat> you have to take off these four big Allen bolts on top. You need an Allen key to take them off. In order to take these off initially, you will more than likely need an Allen key, which fits perfectly, not too loose. Perfectly fits in here. And the Allen key is going to be hit with a hammer. I'm not joking. All right, so you have to hit it with a hammer uh, just to get it moving. Once it starts moving, then you can just turn the rest with the Allen key. And once it's pretty loose at least, you can use the drill. I'm going to use the drill now because I've already loosened it up last week when I replaced the top of the pump. I don't know what size these, these Allen keys need to be, but it's the biggest drill bit that I've got, and it fits perfectly into this head. I, it's as simple as putting on reverse on my drill. So my drill will reverse. Uh, putting it on a low setting on the drill, I don't want to do this too quickly, because I could hurt myself. I want to leave this plastic piece on for now, so I can hold on to it while I'm drilling. Uh, I need to have a firm grip on this thing and I'm just sort of trying to hold it so it doesn't spin. It is possible that this thing will spin around. That's why I have to be very careful. So I'll try slowly. There we go. Easy. 
I will take off this piece of plastic, but only in a minute. There are springs and things. <laughs> there are springs and things in this. All right. This thing is held down with pressure. And these four screws are holding down the rest of the uh, pump because there are springs holding this pump up. Uh, you'll see it better once I take it apart. It's another reason I like to do it in a bucket so it doesn't move around. It's full of oil in here. All right, each of these bad boys comes out. Like I said, you know, sometimes you see water damage on some of the nuts and bolts. You can clean them up if you want to. It doesn't make a big difference. But if they're really rusty, like this one, or you just hit them with a wire brush and they go back to normal. Okay, this top part is a metal plate, and this comes off. Put it to the side. This is the portion that I replaced last week. I didn't make a video of it because I was too afraid that I would fail. Um, this week I'm more confident. I'll show you taking off this clip. Uh, again, you could loosen the sides with a screwdriver. Oh, okay, it's already off anyway. I guess I don't have to loosen anything. I'll leave it intact. Here is my failure from last week. It's a broken gasket. Uh, and it's broken because I squeezed it down before it was set in place properly. And the big question is, how on earth do you set it in place properly? The answer to that is some kind of wax. I noticed that when they put the machine together, there is some kind of uh, white, sort of waxy kind of material. And I don't mean that this is calcium. This is actually in the join. And you can see that some other parts, it also has a kind of a waxy, whitey look. So around this join here, I would like to put a little bit of, um, I think it has to sit exactly there. It's such a perfect position that it has to sit on. It's almost impossible to hold it in place. It's really tricky. And then when you want to just kind of clamp this bad boy on top, that's when, yep. All right, these two little rings fell out. I'm glad I saw that. These two little rings, plastic rings, go into, the rubber rings go in the bottom of this piece of plastic. Uh, actually, I can just stick it down here. And will I, rem will I get it? Yeah, all right, I'll put it here. And these have a little waxy kind of feel to them. Uh, there is something on there, and that kind of holds them in place. What I would like to do, I know it's kind of out of the ordinary. But my wife makes this really nice uh, beard balm. And I'm going to use a little bit of this beard balm, believe it or not, to secure my gasket in place. Uh, in order to do that, I just put a little bit on my finger. Yep, it's just a little bit of grease. I'll show you how it's done. Uh, these two rings, or at least one of them, falls out because it's not very greased. Put a little grease on here. And stuff that uh, will go hard in a cooler temperature is better. Just because my finger makes it a bit oily. 
but then when it cools down it's not oily it's more greasy all right and then in here hopefully that holds it in place that's the plan okay this is where the gasket has to sit inside this top part here inside this top part of the ring I'm going to try to use cotton also because I think my finger is too warm so it's making an effect on this grease this is where it is I have some beard balm here I'm gonna put a pretty I'll try to put a pretty good amount on it's difficult because it's like I've never really tried to oil a plastic surface before at any rate the idea is that I want it to stick and it doesn't matter if it's greasy because it'll just get washed out of the hose um, if it comes out at all you can see it's pulling out kind of crap so it's cleaning it as well all right I'll, I'm trying to put grease along here to hold the gasket in place and I don't know if this is what other people do but I don't care as long as the as long as the gasket is held in place properly if someone knows a better trick to hold the gasket in place that would be great because I don't want to spend 14 euros every time I try and put the lid back on and I don't want to um, I don't want to go through this operation of opening and closing this uh, device so regularly you know every machine's going to work better if you're not opening and closing it all the time uh, all right so yeah there's a liberal amount of grease in here I'd like to say would you agree yes well I don't know it looked to me that looks like a liberal amount of grease but because it's only grease I can't really see it causing any problems as long as that gasket is fixed so let's try that where's the gasket here it is all right All right, this is the old one, the piece of crap, broken gasket. Yes, it's broken. It doesn't work properly. And then this one here is the new one. I will probably finger it a little <laughs> with some grease anyway, just to make it more conducive to sticking to the grease that's already on the, the joint there and uh, you, you can see what I'm trying to do right it's pretty simple all right I'm just greasing up my gasket now hopefully uh, I think olive oil or whatever hopefully that's not gonna be a problem but anyway this is kind of moist I want to put this into the joint here and maybe even i know this sounds crazy i'm going to put it in the joint so it's perfectly sitting in here just perfect and then this is the crazy bit i want to maybe put it in the fridge so that this uh, grease gets harder and it really stays fixed it's in a really good spot i mean it's really perfect i'm not sure if i should grease it up a little more but I do feel a bit concerned that uh, if I don't do this properly, I'm going to break the gasket again. And then so to me, uh, this is more logical than opening the machine and spending more money. All right, it has to really sit in there in the correct spot. And I think with the right TLC, a shit thing to replace all right all right so I put a bit of grease in there and I put the beard balm and I, I put it into the 
joint and I put the gasket inside and you can see that pretty clearly by now. Uh, I'm going to put this in the freezer so that the <laughs> so that the grease is held really uh, firm. Uh, I'm in the bathroom and the bathroom is one of the warmest rooms in the house because the heat is in here. So anyway, I'm going to stick this in the freezer and come back in 10 minutes. All right, I'm back from the freezer. Uh, I just put this beard balm and that uh, in the freezer. All it does, it doesn't hurt the plastic. It wasn't a deep freezer or anything. Uh, there's no water in here to be damaged. Uh, it goes firm and it will hold the gasket in place. So now, with all possible good luck, uh, these two gaskets are in place too. These go back where they came from. I can turn this upside down and the gasket doesn't fall out. That's the main thing. All right, this little baby fell out here. What the? Where did that come from? Here. Okay. All right, I did drop uh, a little gasket out of the end. Anyway, so I put this in. There's a little hole here. I don't know if you can see it properly. There's a little hole. And there's a tip, it's this little white point. Make sure that's in the right spot. All right, just slide it straight down. so that that little tip thing goes into the hole. Now it should be a pretty simple matter of just sort of wiggling the body of it back to where it should be. Over here. Ah, okay. <clears throat> I've got the metal plate. I hope you can see this properly. I'm not sure. I can't see it very well through the camera. Put the metal plate over the top. That's the thing that holds everything together. Uh, the gasket should already be in place. I drop the bolts into the holes. And just sort of finger tight, try to find the, the right holes. Just to start with, just so it finds where it's supposed to be. Using an Allen key is probably helpful. I just don't have it at my side, so I'm using my fingers. All right, that's pretty much where it should be. I have to keep my eyes focused. And I'm not sure if you can see what's going on, but this will go straight back down. The pressure will push these uh, pipes here back down onto the points they should be resting on. And with any luck, yeah, I can push it down a bit with my hand and already get it basically in the right position. I've got to change the drill to the forward drilling position and just lightly, whoop, Okay, lightly drill it in, okay, I'm not drilling all the way down, I'm just trying to drill it in a position.
it's important to do it step by step. I don't do it all at once because then it won't be even. So I kind of go point by point till this part is sealed again and then that oil can't flow out. Yep, as long as the hoses go back down onto the original points, I get more and more confident as I go down. <coughs> Alright, and then once you're pretty confident that it's in the right spot, nothing's moved, nothing's shifted, and this plate is on nice and firm, then you give it a nice one last little one so it gives a little kick, you know, like, like that. Not too hard, because you're going to spin the device around, but just so that you know it's tight. That's it. All right. So, now I can put the, the foot back on the end of the hose. I forget which direction the foot is supposed to be pointing. For some reason, I think that's the right way. All right, I just push that down as hard as I can. And then it's gonna fit in here. It doesn't matter, it can spin around. We've got this clip to put back in. I can hammer it in a little bit with the screwdriver. See it straightens up and everything. That's very firm. All right, hopefully this is on the right side. Otherwise I might have to flip it around. But um, it looks wrong. Okay, damn it. I think I'd have to put it the other way because I look at the frame. Just spin it and then put the clip back. Oh, that's probably not down far enough. And I'm hammering it from the wrong side. Push it down as far as possible. Slides in easy. Nice. It looks good when it's finished anyway, even if it gets a bit bent while you're doing it. I could throw away my old gasket finally. And with any luck, that new gasket is working perfect. I'll take this engine. Sorry, this pump off to the side <coughs> and put the base of the machine back. You can see down here, this is where the <sighs> can you see that all that? All right.
All right, so it works much easier if I fit the pump into the front of the device and then put the back on last instead of trying to do it the other way. All the pieces have to fit snug. Uh, no wires can be hanging out. You know, you really can't afford to uh, cut a wire off by squeezing the machine back together or, or, or pinch a tube or a hose. You have to make sure everything comes back through the right channels. And now I can actually plug this thing back into the top. And put that pin from before and stick it back so it won't pop out from the high pressure. All right, the rest of the machine is ready to go. It's all kind of squashed down. Uh, I'm going to start with the handle. Make sure that's in place properly. And then put the handle back together. Because in a way, that's kind of the linchpin that holds the whole thing together. Popped out before, here it is. Okay. Make sure everything's nice and snug, nice and tight, the way it should be, like it would have come from the factory. Nothing should be uh, pushing up or squeezing out or deforming the shape of it in any way, because then you might have done something wrong. Now I can switch back to my star screws put all of them back in it looks to me like there's four on each side as well as I guess eight all together there's two uh, Phillips head screws in the top and if I'm not wrong the rest of it all kind of clicks together as plastic I'm not tightening it too tight. When I can feel the resistance that it's hit the bottom of the hole, I just stop. I don't try and make it tight. I don't need to make it tight. It just has to be held in place. Uh, and I don't want to thread these screws because who knows if I've done the job properly. <laughs> I won't know really until I turn the machine on and give it a go. I'm pretty sure you could do it much easier some other way maybe there's such a thing as plumber's grease or something like that that I don't know about I just used beard wax because it was the only soft uh, sort of lubricating material that I had on hand and once you put it into the freezer or the fridge it gets quite firm so it shouldn't move out of place when it's time to Put the top of the pump back together. It's funny how simple the machine is when you look at it bits and pieces, but when you put it all together it looks like some kind of complex machine, but it's literally a pump on wheels. And all the pump needs is an electricity source to run the pump and a water source so it can pump something through. And once you've got those two things, you've got a high pressure hose. And the Kercher is no exception. It's a very, very easy product to use. And I'll give you a demo of it once I put this thing back together. It looks like I lost the tiny piece of the styrofoam from the inside. That's what I mean. The product could be a little bit better. I don't want to lose a little bit of styrofoam because it changes the shape of it inside the box. Anyway. All right, so all of the star screws are back in. There are no more screws to put back in. These wheels, I just basically hold them, sorry, squeeze them in place put the plug in and hit it in with a screwdriver no problem same with this one
Wait. Okay. All right, with any luck, that's all we need to do. Replace the gasket. You can hear water dripping out. That's okay. Uh, it had water in the machine. Anyway, uh, that's the Kerka. Fixed, as far as I can tell. I replaced the old gasket that you can see on the floor. That's broken. Replaced it with a new one. And uh, held it in place with some beard balm that you can also see here on this video. Of course, please make a comment if there's a better way to do that. But I wasn't sure how to hold the gasket in place while I did the very delicate operation of positioning it. Anyway, so I'm going to test this. We'll make another video of that. And uh, thanks for checking out what I'm doing here. This is Backyard Experiments. And I'm no expert, but I like to think I have fixed this machine. Please leave a comment below if it was of any help or if you've got any tips or other things that I'd be able to do with this that would also be profitable or helpful. Thanks for watching.